Good morning and welcome to worship as we gather this day on Pentecost Sunday. Please hear the words of the call to worship. O God, who has created the world in such diversity and splendor, grant us the faith to delve into the plethora of th images that reflect your image of reign among us. Help us to celebrate a variety of gifts and images and expressions through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Spirit of Gentleness. Greeting from our Savior's Lutheran Church. Spirit of Gentleness is hymn number 396. Hymn number 396. Playing the organ for us today is Lois Baker. Calling and 
and welcome as we celebrate with our high school seniors in Montevideo here who will graduate this day. We also want to mourn with all those affected by the death of another black man, George Floyd, by a Minneapolis police officer. We look forward to a day when the color of one's skin will not matter <clears throat> and when all, where all will be equal as we are in God's eyes. So welcome to this service this day on Pentecost Day. Uh, please go to our website for a complete listing of those who are requesting our prayers. We have many people who need our prayers. We also want to especially say prayers this day for some of our uh, National Guard members who have been called up to serve down in Minneapolis, as well as some of our local state troopers who have been called there and DNR officers who have been called to help bring peace uh, to Minneapolis and other places around the state. So. We ask um, that you would pray a special prayer for all those providing safety and security as we try to uh, deal with this situation. Our prayers go out to those who have lost loved ones. Uh, we remember the family of Donald Flynn. His funeral was here on Tuesday. And then also we want to remember this day um, the family of Phyllis Niner. She is the mother of Patty and Dave Glumstead, and her funeral was at... Um, uh, St. Joseph's the other day, and so we just remember them in our prayers as well. Next week, something we're going to try something a little different. Once we just get used to things, same, things seem to change. And so we will open, according to the governor's order, we are allowed to have 125 people in worship. Once we have reached that, if we get to that spot, we will ask people to move to an overflow area. We're hoping you'll work with us on that. There will be a letter coming from uh, the church council. They have set up guidelines for how we are going to worship. And so um, those guidelines will come to you in a letter this week. Hopefully by Wednesday or Thursday you'll have that. And we ask you to follow those guidelines um, so that we can be safe together and try and come back to worship. Um, if we find that people aren't going to follow the guidelines, like, like wearing a face mask, and things like that, then we'll just have to go back to Facebook Live and stay with that. So we're hoping you'll work with us um, and so that we can make this uh, really a nice transition back to having people in our pews. So please um, do that, watch for that letter, um, and you can see it there. Uh, thanks for all your generous gifts to our saviors. We continue and, and continue to preach and teach about the love of God and the love of our neighbor, hoping that that might sink in and it might change our world a little bit in the midst of some of this violence and things you see happening around our state and around our country, um, and even in other parts of the world, that somehow this message that we're talking about, the love of God and the love of neighbor will get out and it will start to sink into people about how do we treat others. 
Um, we also want to thank Margaret Bonima for sponsoring our radio and the beautiful flowers that are on the altar this day, celebrating family birthdays. Finally, just one note about the virtual vacation Bible school that starts this week. If you haven't registered, it's not too late, and the online registration link is on our Facebook page. So look for Our Saviors uh, Montevideo, and you'll find our Facebook page, and you can register there. The craft station kits are ready for you to pick up. Quentin will be outside our glass doors outside in front of the church for a drive through pickup if you want to pick up those craft supplies today from 11 a.m. to noon and then tomorrow night from 5 to 6 p.m. Um, these kits have everything you need for the craft projects that are, will be shown in the craft videos as we participate and try this virtual vacation Bible school. We're excited about it. Again, it's not what we all wanted, but it's what we felt that we could do in these times, and we felt that it will be a great success. So um, again, you can register on the Facebook page, Our Savior's Facebook page, and the craft kits you can pick up today between 11 and 12, or tomorrow from 5 to 6. So hopefully you'll um, do that with your children. It's just a great way to learn. Um, Quentin and some of our uh, members have been working on this, and I think it's going to be really, really wonderful. So if you haven't done that, please um, go there and register and come pick up the kits. We continue our service with our brief order for confession. The God who created us and who knows us better than we know ourselves invites us to look at ourselves, be honest about who we've become. Let us confess the state of our lives to God and before one another. We confess to you, O loving Creator God, that we have not lived in the truth that Jesus told us. We have not chosen your reign before our selfish concerns. We have not become servants of others. We have not sought to, to lose our lives in you, but rather we have clung to the trappings of this mortal existence. We have called Jesus our Lord, but we have placed all manner of people and things ahead of our service to, your, to his reign of love and justice. Forgive us by the power of your Holy Spirit. So fill us with your love and your power that we will resist the call of earthly things and seek instead that which is eternal. Amen. Those words, by the way, um, were chosen um, over uh, two weeks ago. And um, I just think how well they fit with what's happening today, what has happened down in Minneapolis. Uh, we have not chosen your reign before our selfish concerns. We have not become servants of others. We have not sought to lose our lives in you but rather we have clung to the trappings of our mortal existence. So in the midst of that confession, God always has words of assurance for us. And here are those words. God always seeks the good of God's children. God loves and forgives us. Let us bless the goodness of God and make our lives testament to the sincere desire to place God's reign first in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. We have our hymn of praise, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. This hymn is number 597 from the Lutheran Evangelical Lutheran Worship Book. Hymn number 597. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. No merit of my own I claim, but holy lean of Jesus' name. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fills his lovely i 
pray. Oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson this day for Pentecost Sunday comes from Acts, the second chapter, verses 1 through 21. Here's the introduction. Pentecost was a Jewish harvest festival that marked the 50th day after Passover. Luke portrays the Holy Spirit being poured out upon the disciples before the gathered and astonished people assembled in Jerusalem for the festival, filled with the Spirit the disciples were able to witness the power of Christ's resurrection. Here's the text. Now when the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them, speaking in the native language of each, amazed and astonished, they asked, are these who are speaking Galileans, not Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes, and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Philagria and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to the Cyrene, <clears throat> visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing among the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this was what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In these last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all the flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in these days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show the portents in the heavens above, and signs in earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, 
The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends our first lesson. This morning we're going to have a, a special piece of music. Some of you have heard this before and it's uh, be re been requested again and we just think it's appropriate. Um, it's called In, these, in Times Like These. In times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid. Rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the Barb and Larry Smith, accompanied by Lois Baker on the organ. Thank you. Our second lesson for this day comes from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Here's the introduction. Paul is helping the Corinthians understand the relationship between our God-given unity and the Spirit-created diversity. The Spirit creates the unity of faith and gives all Christians diverse gifts for the common benefit of all. We need one another's diverse spiritual gifts because the same spirit has given them to each person. 
for the common good. Here's the text. Now, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts but the same Spirit, and these are the variety of services but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by, one of, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we're all made to drink of one Spirit. Here ends the second lesson. We continue with our gospel acclamation. Alleluia. We look to your word, O God, to lead us and guide us. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel for this day comes from John, the 20th chapter. The introduction goes like this. The risen Jesus appears to his disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Now after he said this, he showed him his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Now when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you, receive, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, at this time, we will continue our service with our children's moment. Thank you, Pastor Don and Quentin will be delivering the children's moment. You're listening to our Savior's Lutheran Church, Montevideo. Good morning, and peace be with you. Welcome to this Pentecost Sunday. Wait a second. Something is not sounding right. Can you hear me? Oh, what do I got here? Huh. Looks like I brought something with me. And today I brought with me my headphones, or not headphones, my earmuffs. Um, because today on this Pentecost Sunday, we hear the story of Jesus um, sending the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes among God's people to all people of different languages and different places. And so um, in these challenging times, where we can't see our friends or where we're done with school and we don't have anything to do, it can seem like there's just nothing good to do. And so on this Pentecost Sunday, I want to remind you that when God sent the Holy Spirit, he put the Holy Spirit on us, and each of us as God's people are called to go share God's love with each other. And sometimes, um, like when you have earmuffs, on your ears. It can be hard to see that. It can be hard to understand how to do that. And with all the things going on right now, I understand, and it can be hard to do that. Um, but today's children's moment reminds you to go out and to listen and to hear God and share God's love with each other. And I, uh, it just struck me, the verse when Pastor Don read it, for in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. We are all God's people in one body of Christ, and we are to lift each other up and to spread the love of God to all we meet. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Help us to share your love to all who we meet. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen.
Our service continues with the sermon. Thank you, Quentin. And here again is Pastor Don with his message for today. Well, let's say a word of prayer. Loving God, you fill us with your spirit, and you send each of us out. Remind us in these days of the work that you have for each of us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome on this Pentecost Sunday. Normally when people are gathered here and the few of us that are here today, some of us have red on, red shirts, uh, red buttons, red ties. Even I have my red tennis shoes on. And so we miss you this day in seeing that sea of red on Pentecost Sunday. The pyramids are red and we celebrate the Holy Spirit in our midst. When I think about Pentecost, I have three probably favorite memories. The first two were on the days that my children were baptized. Now these are great moments because in those moments I knew that Barb and I as parents weren't alone, but that God's spirit, God would be with us and walk with us each and every step of the way. I wondered how God would call them and raise them up. These were really great moments. My other favorite conversation about this Pentecost Sunday was a conversation I had with a mom. She came one day to see me at my last church, and she said, you know, I'm kind of upset. My daughter's decided to become a missionary and, and go to a different com country to live. And because our church went on a mission trip, and now that's really changed her, and and I don't want her to live in that other country, and I, I don't know if I want her to do that. And I said to her, then why did you have her baptized? She looked at me, and I said, did you not hear the words that when we're baptized, God calls us out into the world? God calls us out, not always to the most comfortable places, not always to the places that we'd like to be, but where, where we have the ability to serve with the gifts that God gives us. Obviously, God sees that she has a gift to serve and has called her to serve in that way. She didn't really know what to say after that. I said, well, just pray that God will keep her safe. And God has. Well, most of you know the story of Pentecost well. The disciples knew that Jesus was leaving, but Jesus promised that God would not leave us alone. He would not leave us alone. They would send another, the advocate, who would fill and lead them, God's spirit. And so on this Pentecost day, the disciples had that moment that Jesus promised them, the coming of the Holy Spirit. It says the disciples were all in one place, and uh, there were other people there. There was suddenly this sound of a blowing, violent wind, and then the disciples began to speak in languages of every person who was there. And so some thought that maybe they were just filled with new wine, but the Holy Spirit enabled them to speak in tongues of other languages so people could understand. Then... How is it that we can hear in these different languages, some of them asked. They asked one another, what does this mean? Some of them made fun of them and said, ah, they're just filled with new wine. One author writes, this is how the first Pentecost begins. However, what follows in the days to years to come is astounding. So it might be like this. Astronomers tell us that light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Now, if that's too hard to imagine, think of it this way. The starlight that you see shining in your window at night left the star about the time Shakespeare was writing his plays. The light has been traveling all that time to reach us and provide its light. In that same way, what began on that first Pentecost Sunday has traveled through time and still affects us. Centuries ago, men and women were commissioned to make disciples of all nations and although many of them have been gone for almost 2,000 years, the work has traveled through history, and the Spirit still calls us out into the world to be the church of Jesus Christ. Now, we can say that without Christmas, there would be no church, 
Certainly without Easter, there'd be no church, but it could also be said in Pentecost. There might be a church without Pentecost, but it would simply be people sitting in the pews on Sunday and not doing anything else, not going out into the world to be the people God has called us to be. So what is it for you and I? I think of Pentecost is important for a few reasons. First, we know that God is with us at all times. You and I are never alone. You heard it in the first verse that the captives, or in the first um, hymn that we sang, Spirit of Gentleness, that the captives would be free. That's part of what's happening in Minneapolis right now. There are people that have been imprisoned for a long time, treated like second-class citizens who want to have a voice. Now, I am not for the violence that's happening there at all, but I am for the movement that treats all people with dignity and respect. Or in the song that Barb and Larry sang, in, the, in times like these, we need a savior. That's the only way our world is going to change is with the savior working in our midst. Because without that, we're left with our own human instincts, and our human instincts are to take care of ourselves and our family and the heck with everybody else. We need the Spirit to call us out into the world to share that love, to share that peace. I think of all the faithful people who have experienced racism or discrimination on any level. We need that spirit to help us survive in this world, to give us a chance to talk about those difficult things. Second, we are still filled with the spirit and then sent out. In these times, the church has to operate differently. We've been doing things differently for a while now. What started out when we all thought were just a couple of weeks of not having people here in church has gone into a couple of months so the church has had to work differently. But it doesn't mean that we were closed at all. The church was still at work. We were just doing it in new and different ways and some of the old ways that still worked. Your pastors have been reaching out, your youth and family. Person Quentin has been reaching out to families. We're trying virtual VBS. We've had members who felt so blessed that they've come to me and said, is there someone who needs help I'd like to? Give a gift to help them. We're delivering devotional booklets differently and other resources. We've had drive-by meals and rolls on Mother's Day. You see, the church isn't, this building might be closed, but the church is at work. Through our endowment, we've helped to raise over $12,000 for the local St. Martin's Fund to help those in need with an extra gift to help people in times like these. We've asked our members to send cards to our graduates, to our uh, high school and college graduates, and then on, for June 5th, one of our oldest members, Violet Gustafson, will be 100. She lives at Luther Haven. I'm hoping you'll all send her a card as well. In times like these, God calls us out into the world. Let us show the love that God has given us to all of these people. So whereas the building we call the church has been closed for worship, we have continued to worship in new and different ways, God calling us out in the world to use the technology that we have to do God's work in the world. And that is truly a calling to each of us. The Holy Spirit has always been about calling us out into the world. During this COVID-19, we've had a chance to work on that. It's been tough times for many, but God has not left us alone. We were filled and ready to go. When I was a kid, and that time gets to be longer and longer ago, I remember riding one day with my grandpa. He had a 1965 Buick Special, and it was beautiful, and my grandpa, it didn't have a spot on it, not a spot of dust not a spot of anything. My grandpa was really that way, and I probably learned that a little bit from him. But I remember pulling up to the gas station one day, back in the days when they still put gas in your cars. That's how long ago it's been. 
And my, my grandpa yelled out the window, fill her up. And I wondered what I meant, what that meant. You know, I was just a little kid riding with grandpa, so I watched. First, the attendant started filling the gas tank. But then he wasn't done. He washed every window on grandpa's car, even that little tiny side window in the front on both sides. He washed him and wiped him off. He pulled open the hood. He checked all the fluids under the hood. And then finally, he went around and checked the air in every tire on grandpa's car. By then, the gas tank was full. And grandpa handed him a $5 bill for gas and a dime extra because he had cleaned the window so well. Grandpa loved that shiny car and driving it. Fill her up. That's what Pentecost is about, being filled up with God's spirit. God knew that alone we would tear apart this world that we were given. And you've seen some of that in these times, in these days, in the last week. I'm always sad when bad things happen. The tragic death of George Floyd in St. Paul or in Minneapolis by a police officer is beyond my comprehension. Now, I don't know the whole story, and I'm really trying not to judge anyone, but it hits close to home because my children are both people of color. The sadness comes because we don't need this in our world. We have to find ways to let the Spirit flow through us and And maybe it's good we're not all sitting in this space. Maybe it's good that we have a sense that God has called us out into the world. We have to find ways to treat everybody with the love and the grace that God does. If you'd like a perspective on this, one perspective, my daughter actually, who is a senior at the University of Minneapolis, or Minnesota in Minneapolis, she's a senior there now, She actually wrote a great article and put it on Facebook from her perspective as a person of color and what this means. As I read that, I thought to myself, I really don't understand this at all because I've always lived that white privilege life. It's a great starter piece to think about how our humanness gets in the way of being God's people, how we need God's spirit to reach out to the world, Because without that spirit, we simply tear apart everything. Because somewhere inside of us, we don't have what we need. And that's why God left the spirit with us, so that we wouldn't tear ourselves apart. That we would find a way to be God's people in the world each and every day. I rejoice every time we baptize a child. Last week, we baptized a set of twins. If you want to see that great moment, we actually did a Facebook Live broadcast of that. It's only like 14 minutes. But we did that for some of the grandparents because we can only have 10 people in our building. So we did that for the grandparents and others who wanted to watch um, that uh, baptism of a set of twins. Um, It was a great moment for us. and, And Quentin told me the other day that We've had over 700 people view that baptism on Facebook Live. That's what the Spirit's about. What's the Spirit going to do in Griffin and Grayer's life when they grow up? What is God calling them to be in this world? To change this world. To make it a better place. To make it a place where all people are welcome, honored, and loved. You see, I think our world needs that filler-up moment, and we have tried, actually, for hundreds and hundreds of years, but that's why our work is so important. If we ever needed to be the church and to do our work, it's now. If we ever needed that spirit to move us and guide us, it's now. In the uh, first hymn we sang, Spirit of Gentleness, move us from placidness. Stir us, move us, Lord, to a new place where we can proclaim your message. It's a simple task with huge consequences. We are the church. We haven't had the chance to worship in this building, but we are the church, and we are called and sent out by God this day and every day to make the world a better place. Imagine if we treated our spiritual lives like Grandpa treated his 65 Buick Special. 
nothing but the best for our spiritual lives. And I think that's part of what we've missed. I think sometimes we sit in church and we get comfortable here and maybe it's like those earmuffs that Quentin had for the children's moment. Maybe when we go out in the world, we put those on so that we can't hear the world calling us to the work that's around us. Instead, we need to get our spiritual lives in order to be the people God's called us to be. Nothing but the best. That's what Grandpa would have wanted for his car. And that's what God wants in our spiritual lives. We would put in the best fuel that we could find in the Bible. You, know, you have one. And if you don't have one, let us know. We'd love to give you a Bible. Take it out and read it. Try to find what God's calling you to do. Second, we would wash the windows of our soul with the pure love of Jesus Christ. And we would check the air in our tires to see if it's just hot air or if it's the Holy Spirit breathing the breath of God into us as we ride on. The COVID-19 virus has been a tragedy for many. But it's also been an opportunity to see what this church and every church is made of. It's made us move and change, sometimes in ways we've not wanted to, sometimes in ways that we have resisted. But it's also made us look deep into our souls to see what we are made of. Are we truly the church of God through Jesus Christ called out into the world? Or are we simply people who like to worship on Sunday morning because it looks and feels good? God calls us into the world. The Spirit didn't say, Jesus didn't say, um, here's the Spirit, now have a nice life. Jesus says in the gospel, you are sent out. Go therefore out into the world. Make disciples. We're sent out into the world to be God's people. I hope you found God's spirit inside of you. God has a dream for each one of us. As, as, there, as Luke writes in Acts, that you and I have been filled with a power from on high. Go out and be God's people in this world. And when we gather again, then we can praise God. That's what we come to worship for to praise God for all that we have, for all that we've been given. And then God fills us again to send us out. Maybe, maybe this place, maybe this place is like that gas station. Maybe that's why we come to worship, to get filled up with God's spirit, to be filled with that love and joy and praise so that we can go out into the world and make the world a better place. We pray for God's spirit in our world. We pray for that sense of peace and calm in our world. We pray for that peace as it's described in the Bible that passes all human understanding. That's what we need at this time. We need God's spirit in our midst. So on this Pentecost Sunday, I pray that the spirit will lead you and guide you into the world to understand this world better and to see people as God would see them each person as a grand and great creation filled with great possibilities because of God's spirit. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Don. And we will now have... Uh, pardon me there. We will have the song. It's uh, hymn number 800 entitled Spirit of God Descend Upon My Heart. Hymn number 800. Thank you for joining us here at our Savior's Lutheran Church in Montevideo. Our services are at 9 o'clock over Facebook Live and rebroadcast at 11 o'clock over KDMA.
Continue with the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church on heaven and earth, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our offertory song, We Give Thee But Thine Own. And that uh, is hymn number 686. We give thee but thine own hymn number 686. for all of God's people according to their needs. 
Almighty God, you gave us your spirit and called us out into the world. We have tried to spread your message, but some days it doesn't seem like it gets through. So fill us over and over again that we might use every ounce of energy that we have to love you and to love our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. A God of all healing, we pray for all those who have requested our prayers, for Pat and Audrey, for Diane and Marilyn, for Jane and Duane and Tina, for Keely and Gail and Olivia, as well as Linda and Ralph, Kathy and Kate. Remember before you Kim and Rich, Rick and Karen. Remember before you Bill and Jeremiah, Duane and Ty, Fern and Bill and Lucas, Dr. Bob and Aaron, Christopher and Jody, and others that we name in our hearts. Oh, send your healing, O oh Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. O oh God of all grace, we pray this day for our National Guard troops called to action in Minneapolis, our state troopers, and other DNR officers who have been called to help. We pray for safety for our firefighters and for all the great policemen and women who are truly there to serve others. Keep all of them safe as they serve and as they work in this difficult situation in Minneapolis and around the country and in other parts of our state. Please bring your peace and your calm to our nation as we deal with this crisis. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of all comfort, we pray for all those who have lost loved ones, the family of Donald Flynn, the family of Phyllis Niner. Comfort all of those who mourn. Remind them of the empty tomb and our risen Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. O God of all, help us to look inside ourselves and see the racism that each of us lives with. Help us to find healthy ways to learn and to grow into people who look at each person as you do. Simply a marvelous creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. For all these things and whatever else we need, granted through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll now have our special music, Gracious Spirit. hear the words of the benediction. May you know the living Christ and be faithful. As you go forth, may your lives be the meeting place of Christ for others. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll have our sending hymn, God of the Tempest, God of the World. 
And that is hymn number 400. Hymn number 400, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind. And in closing, we would like to, again, uh, thank those who have uh, given to this service to see that it's over the radio and also for the flowers on the altar. And uh, Margaret Bonema uh, gave those this week in honor of all her family birthdays. She's got them all on that. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, Margaret, they look wonderful. We'd also like to give special thanks to uh, Rita Knutson and Lois Baker and our special singers, Barb and Larry Smith, Jerome Froggett, and Pam Bockel. Also like to thank the Elter Guild for, under the direction of Janice Olson and the radio and video personnel in Quentin for the Facebook live stream. As Pastor Don mentioned, look in the mail this week for a letter from the church council uh, saying that the church will be opening uh, for services next week under some conditions. But uh, do come. Uh, there will be up to 110 or so, he said, in the sanctuary, and any others will, will go in, in an overflow area. Thank you for joining us from our Savior's Lutheran Church in Montevideo. Thank you for joining us this day for worship, and we pray that God's Spirit will fill you and send you out in the world to be God's servants in the world and to call others to Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us from our Savior's Lutheran Church in Montevideo, broadcasting live over Facebook and over KDMA at 11 o'clock. And thank those who sponsor today, Margaret Bonema. And if you would like to help sponsor the broadcast, call the church office here. And uh, it's a great way to uh, uh, serve the area with the worship and get God's message out every week. And also, if you'd like to help beautify the church and remind us of the glory of God, uh, we'll take donations for the live, uh, we call them the fresh cut flowers on the altar stand. Do want to mention that. Uh, people do ask, and the number at the church is 269-8824. Uh, if you have a question or anything, do call them, 269-8824. And watch your mail for the message on the church reopening under, again, certain conditions uh, from the state. So thank you for joining us from Our Savior's Lutheran Church, Montevideo. <laughs>